Located in the northeastern corner of North Carolina, just a few miles inland from the Outer Banks, the Albemarle Peninsula is a truly beautiful landscape. It's home to generations of farmers and fishermen and a rich diversity of wildlife, including a uniquely American species, the red wolf. Red wolves are a native and a natural part of this region, having originated in eastern North America and thrived here for thousands of years. This is a species that exists nowhere else on Earth except the United States. Red wolves are a part of the North American landscape, and this area here is part of their historic range. Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge was established in 1984. It's a very large refuge. It's currently at 158,000 acres. And refuges are set aside for wildlife, but not just for wildlife. They're set aside for the enjoyment of the American public. Wildlands Network has been studying red wolves and the interwoven relationships between wolves and populations of game species since 2015. I'm Ron Sutherland, and I'm Chief Scientist for Wildlands Network. So what we're trying to figure out with this project is whether the red wolves have had any kind of negative impact on the local wildlife populations, things like deer and wild turkey. We decided that that was a testable hypothesis, and so we decided to come out here and put out these motion-sensitive trail cameras and see for ourselves what the wildlife was like in places where the wolves had been for 30 years. So far, we've had the cameras out. We've taken close to 200,000 pictures of wildlife, all kinds of different species, lots and lots of bears, bobcats, river otters. We see deer at all the different camera sites we've put cameras out at. The answer is no, the wolves are not eating all the deer. There's plenty of deer out here to share between the wolves and the human hunters. These trail cameras recorded more than 20,000 photographs of deer over a five-year period. In short, while wolves do prey on deer, they do not destroy deer populations. In fact, deer are still plentiful, even 33 years after the initial reintroduction of the red wolf into eastern North Carolina. Deer populations rise and fall naturally due to a number of factors, including disease, weather, hunting pressure from humans, and the presence of native carnivores but there is no evidence that wolves lead to a collapse in huntable deer populations. In fact, deer harvest numbers have actually been higher on the Albemarle Peninsula in years where there were more red wolves and have declined in recent years when there have been fewer and fewer wolves. Deer populations are still dense enough in the area to be considered serious crop pests. Between 2009 and 2019, the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission issued permits to farmers to kill more than 7,000 deer out of season on the Albemarle Peninsula. And it's not just the hunters and farmers who are running into a lot of deer, it's also drivers. Within the last 10 years, the North Carolina Department of Transportation recorded more than 3,000 collisions between vehicles and deer in the five counties that compose the region causing numerous injuries and costly damage. For as long as there have been white-tailed deer, there have been carnivores chasing them. The result is that deer have adapted to handle pressure from red wolves and coyotes. Coyotes and red wolves may look similar, but they're actually distinct species. Because the two species can be difficult to tell apart, red wolves have been mistaken for coyotes and killed. Some people also get frustrated because it seems like protections for the red wolf get in the way of efforts to control coyote populations. In combination, these are some of the most significant reasons why the red wolf population has been decimated in recent years. However, the fact is that trying to control coyote populations through hunting does not work. Most of my research background has been on red wolves and coyotes, specifically in the southeast where I've been studying them for almost 20 years. In general, for management of coyotes, shooting and trapping individuals is not an effective way of controlling their numbers. Because there's enough coyotes everywhere that when you create these holes, they just fill them in. 
And with wolves, we don't have enough wolves to replace those dead wolves. And so wolves aren't filling those vacancies, but we have plenty of coyotes on the landscape. And so they're filling the vacancies. And that's why lethal control just doesn't work. Red wolves displace coyotes. They can't share space, which is why coyotes were never in the Southeast. You know, as you start to recover a red wolf population in an area, and as you start having animals set up territories, within those red wolf territories, you're not going to have coyotes. Wolves will push them out. One wolf territory can hold three coyote territories. What do you want, six wolves, or do you want 18, 24 coyotes running around? Having red wolves on the landscape is also beneficial. They help control populations of mid-sized nest predators, such as raccoons and possums, which prey on the eggs of quail and other birds. Quail are a prized game species, but they're in decline throughout the southeastern United States. Despite huge efforts to save quail by restoring their habitat, these birds still aren't doing well, and overabundant nest predators may be to blame. Red wolves prey on raccoons and possums. That may help keep these medium-sized predators in check, in turn, allowing quail a better chance to survive. This means that having more red wolves may help boost quail populations. That's a finding supported by Wildlands Network's ongoing research, which suggests that bobwhite quail are abundant in the same areas where red wolves spend most of their time. The data gathered by Wildlands Network reveals the advantages of healthy populations of red wolves. Red wolves are core to the identity of this region. Few other places can say they are home to a uniquely American species like the red wolf. If we lose red wolves altogether, this region will lose an irreplaceable part of what makes it special. Now is the time to save this rare and beautiful species for future generations. People can continue to share the woods and fields with red wolves and be richer for the experience of sharing a place still wild enough for the howl of a wolf.